Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today we start a new chapter in the context of the Java Enterprise Edition course. This chapter is entitled GSF, which is the acronym of Java Server Faces. We will start with an introduction, then we will see how this Java Server Faces framework, how it implements the MVC pattern. Then through a series of exercises and programs, I will explain how GSF is used to implement this pattern. I will divide my chapter in three videos. The first part, I will talk about the main concepts behind GSF, how, how, how it manipulates the user interface of the entire architecture. Then I will explain how database tables through a series of three examples how these data tables which are almost a main component when implementing an information system using the web technology then a third video will explain java server faces alongside egbs which means how the gsf framework with the egb framework can implement all the different tiers of a web architecture. So, Java Server Faces arrived on May 2004 at its first release. So, different companies and organizations, other than Sun, of course, we, since Sun is behind uh, Java, which uh, after that has been uh, within the hand of Oracle. So, all the, different companies and organizations were involved in the development of the Java server faces, including Apache Software Foundation, BEA, Borland, IBM, Oracle, and many others. Java server faces or GSF has a specific goal, which is to make web development faster and easier. After, before GSF what was in the market, uh, developers were having servlet and GSPs and were having struts as the first framework with very minor other frameworks. So GSF was on the, t on the time something uh, for which the goal was to make the development of the web interfaces and applications faster and easier. So it allows developers to think in terms of components, events, backing beans, and their interactions instead of requests, responses, and markup. So if you remember, when using servlet and GSP, the, the thinking is focused on requests and responses, while here we focus on other components rather than requests and responses. Of course, why we use frameworks, not simply using servlet and GSPs, because frameworks are extremely common these days. They help make web development easier by handling many common tasks. And like most Java web frameworks, GSF enforces a clean separation of presentation and business logic, as it was the case, and it is the case of many other frameworks. However, for GSF, it focuses more on the user interface side of things and can be integrated with other frameworks such as Hibernate, such as uh, EGBs, etc. Here you have the list of, if you go to Wikipedia, this figure has been taken from Wikipedia. You can have a look of the different frameworks available for Java and you can see that GSF is among them. You have others such as, of course, Spring, which is one of the other very famous frameworks. And you have others maybe less, less important. But here you have the list of all the uh, frameworks and it uh, displays also some statistics. So how GSF works, how it implements the model view controller as you can see i 
very quickly explained this before, but it respects within the entire architecture. So we start first of all with the view, not with the GSP, but with an XGML. Why we talk about XHTML? Because it's like using GSP, which means we have HTML, but containing some dynamic components. So we send the request to a controller. In this case, the control is called, in GSF, is called Managed Bean. It is simply a servlet with some other uh, features and characteristics uh, that helps in the interaction be between the XHTML and the controller. And then the controller send the answer to the XTML, maybe before, in case the managed bin needs to access database, it can, you, it can use the GDBC or can use, uh, normally it uses EGB as we will see at the end of this chapter. So here I'm going to explain a very simple example where you can see that I have a first, view which is named index.xhtml. So index.html is this one. I have a login and then I click on a submit and I have a text field. When I click at the display, I simply retrieve this this one. Here, here I have a, a small uh, uh, mismatch between this and that, but you will see this is only because of the copy paste. But uh, so the index sends the request to the index is uh, index uh, manager. We have a manager. And then the manager does something and sends back the result to the display.xhtml. Okay, so you may guess that the main thing here, if we were using servlet, I have a text field. And this text field, of course, is a parameter that we is sent to the servlet or to the controller. I retrieve this information, I process it, I make some calculations, etc., and then I send it back to the display. Okay, so instead of having to use the request dot get parameter, etc., and the response dot something and some that, what we do here, as you can see, Directly, okay, you can see, of course, uh, since we are using XHTML, I'm using the different libraries that are available for XHTML. So I'm using the basic of XHTML, which is, let's say, the HTML. Then I am using the others of HTML of GSF and the uh, a core of GSF. This, uh, we will see the details of this later on. But since some um, tags are common in terms of naming in both libraries, what I do, I put a prefix. As you can see, whenever I have a tag, I use a prefix to say, this body, am I using the body of H of this library, or I am using body of another library? So you can see, for example, when I use validate length, this is a tag that belongs to this library and not to the H library, right? Okay, so it is very common to use in XSGML uh, different tags and we specify using the prefix to which library I am, uh, I am, I am mentioning. Of course, the other characteristic of XHTML, which is really uh, in opposition to HTML, I cannot, uh, it should be really uh, very strict, no error in XHTML. Okay, so you can see here that it changes a little bit according to what you already know in HTML. So I start with an output text, which is a label, and then I use a input text. And this is the where I type something, where the user is required to type something. It has an ID and it has a value. 
Okay, if you see here, this is the most, one of the most important features of GSF. What I specify, I'm not specifying a specific value, but I'm using this symbol with the name, with the name of the manager, of the managed bean. With, with, as you can see, the name of a property of an attribute of this controller, of this managed bean. The same I'm using here, as you can see, at the bottom, at the button, uh, sorry, at the button, button command here, I'm specifying the value, what is displayed. It is displayed submit, but when I click, what I do, I go to this place, index manager dot submit. We will see here that I am specifying the name of an attribute of this class, and here I'm specifying the name of a uh, of a method of this managed bin. So one of the other characteristics, in uh, if you remember, in servlets we have only the do get and the do post. While in managed bin you can have as many methods as you need. Okay. So in this case, for example, here we have the the submit. So how the managed bin looks like. The managed bin is, as you can see, I specify this is a managed bin. Of course, here I specify I'm using uh, GSF. This is the name of the, uh, I'm I have an annotation that says that this class is a managed bin with its name. This name is exactly the name of uh, what I'm using here in the different XHTML. And then I specify if it is session scoped, so how long this managed bin uh, uh, stays in memory. I have session scoped, you might have request scoped, or you might have also uh, application scoped. You have different scopes. So since it is a Java class, I specify this is index manager, and in general we specify the same name except the, uh, the first letter that goes with a lowercase. Okay, you can see that I have here a specific attribute of this one, which is the login, and it is exactly the login that I have here. Okay, so whenever I specify the name of a class alongside the name of the, its different attributes, I need to have then the constructor and the getter and the setters of all the attributes. Okay, what does it mean? It means I have a complete synchronization between this variable and the value of this input text. So as soon as I type something here in my input text, automatically what happens, there is a call to the index manager and this login starts to be filled with the value I type here. So it, there is a sort of synchronization between the two components automatically, okay? And when I click on index manager, as you can see, I call this class, okay? What you can see also, when I call this class, instead of having, if you remember, how do I give the control to another component we were using the dispatch the forward the include etc here i specify simply the name of my other xhtml my other view and i use the word return the java keyword return so it means what how, what what does mean all this when i type something here before clicking on the summit as soon as i type because i have synchronization between this managed bin and the login automatically in my class the login starts to be filled in memory okay and then when i click on submit what happens what happens i sorry i go to this one and i give the control to my display xhtml remember but meanwhile, login is already filled because there is a synchronization between this index manager and the, the first display, uh, the first XHTML. So when I go to display XHTML, as you can see, 
I have an output, and then I have the value which says the login is simply index manager dot login. There is also a synchronization between these and the value I have in my managed bin it receives. So there is no need to call request, to call response, et cetera, et cetera, because there is complete synchronization. So you can see this as follows. So this is the index.xxhtml. This is my managed bin, and this is the uh, display.xhtml. So this one is on the client at the beginning on the web browser when it starts there is a complete synchronization between this one and this attribute automatically thanks to the getter and the setters okay and when i click it goes here and this one calls automatically this one and of course i have a complete synchronization between index manager dot login with this one Okay, here in this case, since it is an input text, so it's like I'm calling index manager dot set login. And here, because it is an output text, it's like I am calling index manager dot get login, which is these two methods here. Okay, so it's very simple. All the different, it, it may take maybe double uh, the code of if we were using servlets and GSPs. Okay, but you can see that the MVC is almost the same. It's the same. Uh, it's the same uh, way of doing things. So, I'm going to show you. So, at the beginning, if you want to call a new one, you say web application. You click on next, click next, and then you specify here that you are using GSF. Okay. So this is what I have done here for you. This is my application index and in the index manager. So if I start this one, okay. So if you type something like here, okay. So you can see that it works very really easily. All right, so something maybe we have talked about before is, is this one. If you want to start from another, here it starts by default by the index or XHTML, but if you want to change the starting point of your application, you go to web.xml and you go to welcome file list in web.xml and, and you change the name of this file, very simple. Okay, so next let me explain. Now, if you remember, this is the example meter to fit using GSF. So I have meter, when I type, I click here, I go to a index manager and then index.xhtml and I display. Okay, so in this case, you may guess pretty simple. Okay, yes, two other features I can show you here. If I type something that is required, you can see that automatically GSF tells me the value is required. I added something just to show you how it works. You can add other validations if you want, like for example, the length is less than the allowable minimum of four, because I uh, this is simply to show you that you can have a length if you want to start with at the beginning. Okay, so you can guess this is exactly the index HTML as we did before. I have the button which called the index manager dot submit. I have my input text which has which synchronizes with the index manager dot meter. Okay, but you can see that I'm adding this. Uh, constraint that this value is required. That's why when I type nothing and I click on submit automatically, this one is used. So no need, for example, in this case to use JavaScript is already embedded in GSF. And you can use another um, 
tag that belongs to GSF that is called validate length. And you can see here that I put four as the minimum number of values to have. So let me show you how it works. Here is the example. So index HTML. And you can see that my index manager, what I do, I have in this case meter and feet. So I have the get feet, the set feet, the get meter and set meter. Okay. And uh, this is simply to show you when the uh, constructor is called exactly. And the, 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 the submit method. So when I have the submit, I can then automatically calculate the feet, which is meter times something, and then I return to display.html. <coughs> so in the display, sorry, in the index, there is a synchronization, synchronization with the meter, while in the display, I need to have the meter and the feet, both of them. So if I execute this, So if I take off this, if I type, I have the value is required. If I type only one value, for example, this one, and I click, you see that it says minimum number of four. But if I type something like this and that or whatever, and I click on submit, then I can calculate. Okay. So here, the next part I will talk about data tables. So here I end <clears throat> my first video concerning GSF. Simply to recall that what we have seen, we have seen introduction about GSF and how it respects the, how it implements GSF framework, how the GSF framework implements the invisible pattern. And we have seen some characteristics <clears throat> about GSF and how it improves the servlet and GSPs. It is one of the um, frameworks that you can use, one of the most used frameworks that you can use on the user interface side. Uh, you have the model, uh, sorry, you have the, the, it focuses on the view and the control. If you want to use it uh, all along the uh, entire architecture, you need to combine it with something like EGBs, for example, or the AO, etc. I may say, statistics say that almost 25% of all the applications today are uh, GSF applications, so it's uh, interesting, important to know something about it. So I stop the first video here till I show you in the next video uh, data tables.